For the past four weeks, I switched from my iPhone 13 to the 2022 iPhone SE as my main phone. And today I'm gonna to share with you my experience. But first, why? Well, good question. These days, more than ever, flagship phones are becoming more expensive and more affordable phones are getting better. If you're currently using an iPhone 10, 11, or 12 and are thinking of upgrading, the question is, do you still need to spend $800 on the iPhone 13 or is the new $429 iPhone SE the better value option? Let's find out. So the biggest difference between the iPhone 13 and iPhone SE, uh, aside from price, is the design. The iPhone 13 features Apple's newer, more sharp design with thin bezels surrounding its stunning 6.1 inch OLED display. It also has Face ID and a dual lens camera system, one of the best camera systems on any phone, just behind the iPhone 13 Pro, but more on cameras in a bit. I consider myself a power user and use my phone for many hours each day. I do everything from productivity, uh, messaging, replying to emails, content consumption, watching YouTube videos and content creation, editing photos and posting to social media. And the design of the iPhone 13 is very well suited for these tasks. On the other hand, from a design perspective, the iPhone SE is almost identical to the iPhone 8 from 2017. The recycled design helps keep costs down, and while I never had an iPhone 8, I did have an iPhone 6S, and compared to that, the iPhone SE feels almost nostalgic and very familiar. I mean that both in a good and bad way. Good in a sense that the small, lightweight design is super comfortable in the hand. I can also easily use it with one hand, and it seamlessly fits in my pocket. And this is great for portability. Oh, and also Touch ID is fantastic to have. But with the small design comes a smaller display. And this brings me to the biggest compromise with the iPhone SE. The 4.7 inch display is small. Usable, yes, but still small. You may think, well, you used to have an iPhone 6S and that used to work out fine. So how come the display is too small now? Well, I had my iPhone 6S back in 2015, and like with many, I use my phone differently today from how I did seven years ago. What I look for in a phone has fundamentally changed. When it comes to content consumption, watching videos, browsing the web, uh, using maps, or even the keyboard to type a message, the display on the iPhone SE really is small, and I find it hard to adjust to and go back to after being used to the much larger display on the iPhone 13. The display on the iPhone SE is also not an OLED, and this means colors are not as vibrant. Uh, the display, though still visible in sunlight, is also not as bright compared to that of the iPhone 13. Will the display also be too small for you? Well, that depends on how you use your phone. But the display is a critical component of any phone, so I really suggest you think about this carefully. The display on the iPhone 13 compared to the iPhone SE is much nicer to use. Not only are text and images bigger, uh, you can also see more at a time. And thanks to the OLED technology, content just looks visually better. Let's talk about performance, as this is where the iPhone SE really shines. It has the same A15 Bionic chip as from the iPhone 13, and this is the most powerful smartphone chip that is out right now. And this means the iPhone SE will perform just as well as the iPhone 13, not just today, but also for the next three, four, five years to come. No other phone at its price even comes close to this level of performance and longevity. And this really is a strong argument for the iPhone SE. It offers Apple's experience in terms of performance, reliability, and longevity at nearly half the cost of the iPhone 13 and less than half of the iPhone 13 Pros. But does the iPhone SE take full advantage of all this performance? Well, yes and no. Yes, in a sense that it runs all the same apps as the iPhone 13 and runs them just as well. Editing photos in Lightroom, switching between open apps and exporting videos. It does it all with ease and basically never lags during day-to-day -day use. However, this brings me back to the display. Because it is so much smaller compared to the iPhone 13, I find myself spending less time using it. In addition to display size, battery life also plays a role here. Compared to the seven to eight hours of screen on time on the iPhone 13, the five to six hours of screen on time on the iPhone SE is a significant step down in battery performance. In day-to-day -day use, the iPhone 13 can comfortably last all day with around 30% to spare. If I stretch it, I can get around one and a half days of battery life. This is really great. Where on the other hand, the iPhone SE reaches 20% battery life by the end of the work day. It has never lasted a full workday and evening without a top up somewhere during the day. 
The performance on the iPhone SE is best in class and unmatched at its price, but the battery and the display do limit how much you can realistically utilize this performance. And this brings me to the cameras. If you want to learn how each of these perform individually, I suggest watching my individual iPhone SE and iPhone 13 review videos. But comparing the two, I was impressed by how well the camera on the iPhone SE stacks up, even to the iPhone 13. It is a single lens camera system, so no ultra wide angle lens like on the iPhone 13, uh, but comparing the two wide angle lenses, they're actually quite similar. Colors are vibrant without being too saturated. Dynamic range is great, pulling details both in brighter and darker parts of the frame. And skin tones are true to life. The iPhone SE may just have one camera, but it is one of, if not the best cameras you can get at its price. And again, is very comparable to that of the much more expensive iPhone 13. Now it doesn't have the ultra wide lens as from the iPhone 13. And this is something that realistically, I don't really miss having. What I do miss having, however, is night mode. Low light photos look significantly better on the iPhone 13. Also thanks to its larger sensor, which naturally lets in more light. Still, when it comes to cameras, rest assured, for social media use, casual photography, the iPhone SE more than delivers. As a tech reviewer, I want to use as many phones as I can across a range of prices to broaden my perspective and ultimately help me give better advice in my videos. So with that in mind, at the end of the day, will I be switching from my iPhone 13 to the iPhone SE? No. For me, the sacrifices in display and battery are just not worth it but this may be different for you. I have family and friends who, after years of always buying the flagship phones, went for a more affordable alternative, like the iPhone SE, and never looked back. After all, the iPhone SE is a phone that does the essentials and does them well. It all comes down to how you use your phone. If you use your phone for a smaller set of tasks, less for creating and consuming content and more for communication and some light productivity, then the iPhone SE with its famous Apple performance, reliability and longevity may be a solid option and opportunity to save some cash. You know, whilst making this video, I was actually curious as to how the iPhone 13 mini fits into this equation. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see an iPhone 13 mini to iPhone SE comparison video. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. And if you haven't seen them yet, I highly recommend watching my iPhone 13 review as well as my iPhone SE review. Thanks so much for watching this video, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.